Hi, I'm Mike. Every day has the potential to be one of those days on the ranch. And when things break, it can slow you down and even shut you down pretty quickly, especially when dealing with haying and the equipment we use. With some problems, there's no easy fix. And sometimes you have to call in reinforcements on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Welcome back to our Wyoming life. All this month, we've been haying, cutting the hay fields to make the winter hay for the cows, cutting grass, raking it, and baling it. We've also been fighting the weather, afternoon thunderstorms over the past few weeks that will shut down haying faster than a six month old with no diaper will shut down a public pool. You think that every day around here would be pretty much the same this time of year, and for the most part, I guess it has. This is how most of my days go lately when it comes to haying. I go out, I cut grass for about four hours, then I rush to get it raked up. If it doesn't rain, I can usually bale the next day, but sometimes the weather has different plans. You know how when you're mowing your lawn after it rains or you forget that you were planning to mow the next day and you left the sprinklers on, now that wet grass clogs up your mower? For us, you're basically mowing hundreds of acres and the rain is just as big as a, of a pain, but just for different reasons. For us, using the sycamore wet grass isn't so much of a problem. This thing will cut through just about anything, and wet grass really doesn't bother it too much. The nice thing about the sycamore is that it lays the grass down right behind it in a nice little sheet. That grass, even though it may be a little damp, will dry out really quickly in the sun. Sometimes it dries too fast, and we have to use the rake to get it back into a windrow or a pile so it doesn't dry out before we get a chance to bale it. When we bale, we want our grass to be less than 16% moisture. We have a handy meter in the baling tractor that takes an average of the moisture level of the grass in the baler. As you can see, it's pretty dry. This year, with the rain, the rake has been getting a workout. If the grass we cut gets rained on and it's in a windrow, then we have to dry it again. The moisture will sit at the bottom of the windrow, and if we baled it now, that wet hay would mold inside the bale. Mold in pregnant cows is a very bad combination. It can cause cows to abort their fetus if it's eaten at the wrong part of their development. So we avoid it as much as we can. When we have a wet windrow, we roll it over to let it dry out on the backside. And for us, it works great the sun and wind will move through the windrow and dry it out fast, sometimes too fast. The rake has probably been our most used implement this year, rolling windrows at least twice and putting windrows together to make baling faster with less wear and tear on the baler, but not on the rake. So not every day starts out the same around here. Sometimes life throws you a curve and you get a chance to either hit it or let it go by. Most times I swing, not because I want to, but because I have to. This morning, as we came out to get to rolling over another set of windrows after overnight rain, I found the rake like this. Now, just walking up to it, you can see that something isn't quite right. The main support bar, which is usually straight, now it's not. This piece of six inch square tube steel that runs down the length of the rake is basically the main support beam and it's broken. Here's the dilemma. The way it sits now, we can't fold it up, which means we can't move it out of the field to fix it. I don't have a welder on my truck, so fixing it in the field really isn't an option. So we need to figure out a way to move it back to the shop. Short of a Chinook helicopter, we're gonna have to get it folded up and pulled out of the field. And the way to figure out to do that lies with figuring out how it broke in the first place. Not only is this tube of steel holding up the frame of the rake, it's assisted by a piece of C-channel that runs underneath it. This channel bolts into the back of the rake and takes a bunch of the load. Obviously, these bolts are broken, which then allowed the rake to be only supported by the main channel. Oddly enough, this is what this thing's made to do, break. The channel is held on by what they call shear bolts, bolts that are made to break off if they're put under too much stress. This field that we're working on is rough, and my guess is that I hit a bump and broke those bolts. The problem is you can't see those bolts or this channel from inside the tractor, so I had no idea they broke. 
Then a few miles or a few feet later, I hit another bump, which put stress on the middle of the beam and started the crack. That crack grew overnight to the problem that we have now. Now that we know what happened, we can look into how to fix it. In order to move this thing, we're gonna have to get that C-channel bolted back in place. Let it take the stress off the main beam long enough to just get it folded up and get it back home. To get things matched up, we're gonna need a jack. I have a floor jack with me. And after some scrounging around, we find a few pieces of lumber and a log that'll help us get this thing back into place. Worst case scenario is that the thing falls and the beam breaks completely in half. But as long as I stay out of the way, I should be safe if it does fall, and I have faith that we can get it jacked up. With it holding in place, we can use some extra bolts to secure the C-channel back in place where it's supposed to be, and hopefully it'll support the weight it needs to. Ranching is sometimes a lot of winging it, and for me anyway. And although I don't know if this is gonna work, I sure hope it is. And when it comes time to let down the jack, we find out. Here's the nice thing. If I can get this thing folded up, then the wing bars and the wheel will, wheels will actually support the middle beam for the trip home. So that's our next goal. And away we go. Back at the shop, it's time to formulate another plan. This one, how we're gonna fix this thing. I have a welder in the shop, but the rake is not gonna fit in the shop. So it's time to call for some help. Now, I could weld this myself, after all I am the world's okayest welder, but this is a pretty big break and a piece of equipment that is gonna be essential to us finishing haying this year. If I weld it, there's a chance I could have to weld it again. But if I call a pro out, then I know it's done right. And with the other problem of not having a welding machine that can reach out here, seems like the smart thing to do. We call in a few favors and end up with Rick, a professional welder and mechanic with his own service truck to help us out. Our brake isn't getting any better. And with the help of Rick's truck and his crane, we're able to strap onto the rake and lift the main beam back into place where it's supposed to be. Rick starts by cleaning off all the paint, grinding the seams clean, and then gets to welding the thing back together. I lost track of how many passes of welds he put down. But like any good welder, he also wants to brace the new joint, and we can do that with some scrap angle iron that we just have laying around. Laying the angle iron over the edge of the beam and welding them in place, giving us a solid bridge over our new weld. When the crane is released, nothing moves at all, which is a good sign. After it cools a little bit, a little bit of paint makes it look nice and pretty. Then it's back to work, folding the rake back up and headed back out to the field. Overall, this breakdown has cost me most of a day. But if the weather cooperates, then it's a day that I can make back up pretty quickly. The hay out in the field is still wet. The windrows still need to be rolled over to dry, and there's no better test than a working test. Although we'll have to keep an eye on this rake for the rest of its life, the problem looks fixed. Around here, no fix is permanent, but it seems that if we take it easy on the rake, drive a little bit slower, watch out for bumps, hopefully we'll get many years out of this repair. Every day when I come outside, I really have no idea what to expect. Cars can drive through fences, cows could be out, buildings could be on fire, and equipment can be broken. That looked just fine the day before. It's always an adventure, and every day I learn something new. I figured out pretty quickly that you have to embrace the things that happen, figure out how to deal with them, and get them fixed. And I'm here to tell you that if you need help, make that call. Thanks for helping us out and joining us today. We hope that you can subscribe because we have a lot more on the way from the ranch. And I invite you to come hang out with us this weekend, or this weekend, what am I talking about? Wednesday, I don't even know what day it is half the time. 
This Wednesday, we're going to be live right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Both Aaron and I look forward to getting the chance to answer questions and let you know what's going on around here and the ranch. This week, we have a couple special things happening too. We're gonna to be taking for the first time ever video questions from viewers just like you. And we have a special tribute on the way for our Patreon and other supporters during a very special mail call. I hope you can join us. That's this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Until then, have a great week and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.